Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Kalep, or Kaliwa. Uh, I'm from DG Lab uh, in Tokyo. So, uh, John Newberry, <coughs> who you probably saw yesterday, he, we're both going to talk about wallets today. Uh, and I'm going to start off with a bit of a messy subject, um, coin selection. So, uh, unless you're familiar with how how UTXOs and stuff work, and this might be a little confusing, but um, hopefully it'll be clear by um, if you think about it a little. So, coin selection, um, I'll go through the concept, what it is, and uh, why it's needed, and then I'll go through how it's done in Bitcoin, in Bitcoin Core. Um, the different wallets have different implementations of this. There's actually a talk from Scaling last year talking about how coin selection can be um, made better. But uh, anyway, so um, when we receive Bitcoins, we receive them in transactions. So um, in, in one transaction, it can be a payment to us, and it can be payments to other people. Um, a very common case is that you send something to someone, and you also send something to yourself in one transaction. And the reason we do that is simply because, you know, um, if I have 50 bucks, I can't just rip it in two and give you 25, because um, this is this is one you know atomic unit. If I want to if I want to pay someone with this, I have to give it to them, and they have to give me back the change. And this is exactly how Bitcoin works. Um, you can't just take take a coin and and rip it rip it apart and leave some part in it. So whenever you spend um, a coin in Bitcoin, you spend it. You can't spend it again. So you have to send back to yourself uh, the change. Uh, in any case, all of these coins, we, we refer to them using outpoints, which is basically just the, the ID of the transaction they're in and the, the index inside of that transaction. We talked about that yesterday. I think Jimmy Song mentioned it, um, or John Newberry, or both. Um, so even if we use the same address, which we shouldn't, and even if we receive multiple times inside the same transaction, each of these coins will have a different outpoint. So the balance that we have in our wallets is basically just a list. We just take all of the coins that we have that we can spend, and we just add up all of the uh, values of all the coins. And that's our balance. So there's no, no such thing as an account in Bitcoin. Um, it's just a bunch of coins that are added up, kind of like a wallet. Uh, so when we want to send coins to someone, we have to do two things. We have to you know, find enough coins. We have to pick enough coins inside of our wallet so that we can um, cover the amount we want to send. And uh, we also have to uh, send a change back to ourselves, uh, if there is any. Uh, so <clears throat> this is simple and all, but we want to kind of uh, do this in a specific way. Uh, we want to minimize the number of coins that we spend. Uh, and um, there are several reasons for this. I'm mentioning a couple here. So whenever we take two coins that we have, that we received from different people in different histories, and we spend them together, uh, we are tying those coins together. We're saying that these two coins belong to the same person. So if this coin was um, uh, owned, if the person who sent this coin keeps track of us, they will also know that we, sent this, that we, we were given this coin. So now they can say, OK, this person received this history of transactions, and they also have this history of transactions. So, so, so it reduces privacy. Uh, also, having lots of coins, we select lots of coins, and we end up with a bigger transaction. And because we pay the fees in terms of number of bytes, um, we pay Satoshi per byte. So we want the transaction to be as small as possible, because smaller transaction means uh, cheaper transaction. Um, so I mean, if we can find coins so that we match up exactly to the amount we want to send, that's also great, because that means we can skip the change output. And that means we have a smaller transaction as well. So anyway, this whole process is called coin selection. And uh, I will go through how it works in Bitcoin Core now. So um, this is how coins are selected. This might change in the future. Um, uh, but anyway, you take all of the coins that you have available, every single coin you can, you can spend right now in your wallet. And then you shuffle them. You just randomly shuffle them. And then you start going through them one by one. And, um, the first thing you do is you check if the value of the coin that you're looking at right now, if this, is this value exactly the, the amount that I need? Uh, if it is, then you just return it, and you're done. Uh, if the value is lower than our target, we put it into this pile called the value, the value list. And we also add its value to this total. We keep track of the amount of all of the 
coins that are smaller than uh, the amount we want to send. So we have this list of coins that are lower than the target, and we also have the amount of them. Uh, we keep track of the amount. And if it's bigger than the target, we check, is this smaller than the, the, um, the smallest previous coin that was larger than the target? So we try to find the coin that is the closest to the target above the target. And if, if we find such a coin, then we mark it as the smallest tire. And we keep updating this, this list. Um, and um, at the end, we check, is the sum of the total, the total all, all the coins that were smaller than the target, if all those sum together are equal to the target in value, then uh, we return the list as is. Because that means we are exactly sending the amount that we are, have available um, below uh, the target. And if the sum is less and there's a marked coin, uh, we just return a marked coin. Because that means we are finding we, we found the, the minimum amount of coins to send to, to cover the target. And that is that one coin that was close to the target, but above it. Um, yeah. Why coins are shuffled? Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so, um, let me see here. Yeah. So um, after this, we, we, we take the, the list of values and we, just, we, we sort it uh, in the biggest, biggest value first. And then we do this thing called approximating uh, the best subset. I will talk about that in the next slide. Uh, and after we approximated the best uh, subset, we return the approximated solution, uh, unless it's really bad. Uh, and if it's bad, we just return the marked coin, if any. And if there is no marked coin, we failed. So uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't cover this, this transaction. We didn't have enough to do it. So, um, so let's talk about the subset approximation thing that I was mentioning. So uh, <laughs> this is a little brute force-ish, uh, but it works fairly well. So, but um, yeah, we do this thing uh, about a thousand times or something like that. Uh, and every time we loop, we um, try to track the best solution we found so far. And, um, and we keep doing that. We keep updating the best solution. So we find a, a solution that is as close to the target as possible in terms of coins. So uh, we, we go, what we do is we go over the coins twice. The first time, we, 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 toss a, we, you know, we toss a coin. If it's heads, we add the, uh, the coin to, to the list. And if it's tails, we skip over it. Uh, the second loop, we just go through and we just add the coins uh, as, we, as we encounter them, uh, unless they're in the list already. So we do this twice, two, two times loop, and um, every time we add a coin, we check, did we reach the target? Did we get enough coins to, to fulfill uh, the amount we want to send? Um, and if we do, if we did find that, uh, if we didn't have enough to pay, we check, is this solution that we have now, is it smaller in terms of value than the current smallest solution that we have? And if it is, we replace the, the solution with this one. This one is better, so we use this one instead. Uh, and then we do that. We keep updating and, rope and, and uh, iterating uh, repeatedly until uh, we're done. And then we return the solution in question. Um, so this entire process, the whole coin select process and the subset approximation process, is done about uh, it's, it's done up to seven times. Um, and each time, we're, the, the parameters are slightly different. If you look at the source code, you see this line in, um, uh, you see it's about seven lines of code where they call this select coins min conf method uh, seven times, up to seven times. Uh, each time, the, um, the parameters become uh, less strict. So the first time, it's really, really strict, and then it just gradually loosens them up until at the very end, it just, whatever, you know, give me, any coins that I have that, that would fulfill this, and I don't care if they're unconfirmed. It's, you know. So it tries not to use uh, recently confirmed or unconfirmed coins. It tries to use coins that have been, uh, you know, that are secure uh, and won't risk a reorg or something. Um, and then it tries to not use coins that are in a long unconfirmed chain um, and uh, other things. You can check the code if you're interested in exactly what it's doing. Um, but um, yeah. So that's basically coin selection. Uh, any questions about coin select? Yeah. Does the main goal of coin selection is to like automate where the user doesn't have to worry about making like UTXO dust transactions in their wallet by accident? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's hard to make a UTXO dust um, by, by accident unless you're manually creating your transactions. 
Uh, I mean, dust would basically just be you create a UTXO that is, that is so little amount in it that, um, you know, you, uh, you can't spend it afterward. It, it, actually, the transaction wouldn't even relay because of the dust. But uh, I mean, Bitcoin Core right now, I, I didn't mention it here, but a part of it after you select the coins, it will actually skip the change if, if, the, if, if it's below the dust threshold. So, uh, so we'll actually increase the fees or just increase the amount it's sending to the person. So uh, it does have, you know, uh, failed checks for that. So. Is there any law right now that lets users more granularly control their coin selection? Um, you, can, you can use, uh, yes. Uh, I know that, for example, um, if I get this name right, I think Electrum has where you can go in and do actual coin selection. I think Bitcoin QT lets you do that. Uh, as well, uh, you can actually see the the list of your UTXOs, and you can just check, 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 and pick them manually. Um, but um, yeah, so you can do that. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? All right, I'll let John Newberry continue then, and um, thank you for your attention.